What's up everybody, this is Danny. Today I'm gonna to be reviewing the Asus Padphone X. Now the Padphone line is not new to Asus at all. Actually some variants have been available internationally for quite some time, but this is a brand new AT&T version that's exclusive to the carrier and it's available for $199 on a two year contract and it's bringing a five inch 1080p smartphone and a nine inch tablet all in one package with just one data plan. The concept itself is actually extremely simple. All of the horsepower that you need to run the tablet is inside of the phone. So the tablet actually has a dock where you slip your phone into and bam, right away you have a tablet interface. So this can be very useful for people that need a larger screen and for productivity. And the tablet itself actually houses a 4,990 milliamp battery. So it'll charge your pad phone twice. The phone itself features a 5 inch 1080p display and also is being powered by the Snapdragon 800 processor, not the newer 801 processor, with 2 gigabytes of RAM and a 2300 milliamp battery. Let me tell you, the display is very good. It's got nice color replication, it's sharp, it's got 441 pixels per inch. So I don't think you'll be disappointed in the display whatsoever. It could be a little bit brighter in the sunlight, but that's about it. But the one thing I didn't like about this phone is the actual interface that they put on there. It's a little too colorful. This is just my personal preference though. Some people may actually like it. So I think it's too heavily skinned for my taste. But the great thing about it is it's running Android 4.4.2. So it's running KitKat. For those of you that don't know what KitKat is, it is a current version of Android. Now let's talk about the actual hardware itself. And the bad part about the hardware is that it's not terrible, but it's just kind of uninspiring. I mean, all the buttons are there where you want them to be, the power button, the volume rocker switch, your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and your micro USB at the bottom. And you even have a 13 megapixel camera on the back with an LED flash and your single speaker. It is definitely a chunky phone and looks like something from maybe like five years ago. It really does look like that. Modern smartphones usually don't look like this and maybe you guys might disagree. So let me know in the comment section below. But the one thing I didn't like about the hardware at all was where the power button was placed. Using this every day was a little bit difficult. I would really like to see the buttons move down a bit because I thought that the power button was a little too high on the device itself. It's not a ridiculously tall device, but it definitely was uncomfortable to hit that power button every time you turned on the display. Let's go back to the software real quick and the skin. I just wanted to show you the keyboard that looks like something from a couple years ago as well. It's pretty ugly in my opinion. It was a little hard to type on. So the first thing I did was put Android L keyboard on there and it was much better. And I also had to take away some of the widgets and the complexity that was around everything. Now this is not only an ASUS problem, but that's one of the first things I had to do. I like things a little bit more simplified in my opinion, but the actual screen itself, once again, is very good. The performance is good. Touch sensitivity is good. So the Snapdragon 800 actually does fine and the performance is just fine on the Padphone X. Now that we've talked about the phone, let's talk about the tablet base for a little bit. And you can see how weird the shape is because it has to accommodate for that actual dock for the phone to sit in. And if you look, this is a pretty thick tablet experience with that phone in there. But the one cool thing about it is that all of this can be carried in one device so you can have your phone and your tablet so if you're going to school or if you run a business or something this could be very cool knowing that you're carrying a phone and all of the power that you need for the tablet is right there. Even though that the concept is extremely awesome, I did run across some problems while I was testing this device. Now, this was a pre-production unit. I did do some software updates in between, but this is exactly how it's supposed to work. Here is the actual browser itself. And if you were actually browsing something on your phone and the screen was too small, you should be able to slip it right in to the tablet portion and continue exactly where you left off. In most cases, it did work, especially across the stock apps like your browser and things like that. It works just fine. And if you actually go into the settings, you can control this and look at all the different apps. You can actually enable these apps to work under the tablet mode. But I had some problems with this. Uh, here's the YouTube app here. And if I'm pulling the phone out of the tablet dock here, you can see that it actually opens up the YouTube app, but it does not take me to the video that I was watching. And I expected that. And if you know a workaround on this, let me know in the comment section below. But there we go again, watching a video on the pad phone itself, slipping it into the actual tablet. 
then I would expect the video to play exactly where I left off, but it actually just opens the YouTube app and that's all that happens. So hopefully the dynamic display list will grow and they can put out some software updates to where they can add some functionality here, especially with the video games. Even though that I saw this game in the dynamic display list, I enabled it, but it doesn't actually do anything here when you put it into the tablet itself. So I would love to be playing a video game on my pad phone and then stick it into the tablet and just pick up right where I left off. By the way, if you're worried about gaming, gaming actually performs well on both units, even inside the tablet and the phone itself. The tablet actually has a lower resolution. It is 1920 by 1200, so you're not pushing around a whole bunch of pixels. I think it's about 252 pixels per inch. So the video games actually work very well, very fluid, so I don't think you'll have any problems here at all with gaming. But the stereo front-facing speakers, I was definitely disappointed with them. I mean, listen to these speakers. This is at max volume. Maybe my unit was not right or something, but it definitely was a little bit on the low side for me. You don't have to worry about the phone actually coming out of the tablet dock whatsoever. It's actually pretty secure on there. But the one thing you're gonna notice is that the top of the phone, it does shake around a little bit. And when you put it flat on a surface, you will feel it rock a little bit. And the bezels are absolutely ginormous on here. They're much bigger than most normal tablets are, but I can see why they did that because it's a pretty heavy tablet. So when you have it in your hand, you will notice that if they had thinner bezels, then it might not be as comfortable. This form factor definitely makes for a odd feeling tablet, especially just the curvature of the back. And once again, when you put it flat on a surface, it definitely rocks if you're putting the touch inputs on the corner. Now, if you're just touching it in the middle there and just swiping, you won't feel it rock. But anyway, the actual camera itself, I cannot believe that once you have the phone docked into the tablet that you cannot shoot at the full 13 megapixel resolution. I don't know why, maybe that's just the connection in between and it can't do that, but it just doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why you can't shoot at the full resolution. So if you're gonna take pictures with your tablet here, which you shouldn't anyway, then you will not get the full resolution. The one thing you can do with the phone docked into the tablet is you can actually take phone calls. So that's pretty cool. So if you're watching a movie or something, you can take a phone call on here. The call quality is pretty good. It's not too bad whatsoever on the phone and on the tablet. Not the best that I've heard, but it will definitely do. So let's talk about the optics of the Pad Phone X. There's a 13 megapixel camera back there and right below it is the single back speaker. And let me tell you that back speaker is very weak. It doesn't sound very good. So between both of the devices, that and the tablet, the speakers really aren't that great. But the 13 megapixel camera is actually able to shoot 4K video. And I've shot a ton of 4K video with all the flagships out there. And if you look here, the actual dynamic range is probably one of the worst that I've seen on 4K video. And if you look here, this is on a tripod actually, and it's skipping frames big time. And I'm not sure if this was just my unit or not, but as you can see, it's definitely not as smooth. And the dynamic range is definitely worse than some of the cameras that I've seen out there, definitely for 4K video. So if you're going to shoot a lot of 4K video with this, this might not be the phone for you. But if you don't care about 4K, just put it to 1080p and it should be no problem. It actually recorded fine on the 1080p mode. So what about the still picture performance? Actually, it was just okay for me. In well-lit situations, it takes good pictures, but sometimes it has some focusing problems. You can see that the actual shot is a little bit soft, especially in this one, you can see, and the color replication is a little bit off. Here's a great example of this. Look at how it's in focus, but it's really soft, but then if it actually gets the focus right, then it takes a better picture. Now, the low light performance is not that great on this camera either, but it is able to take a decent shot in good light. And you can see how overexposed some of these pictures are. Thank God you can actually dial down the exposure on the manual mode and you're probably going to need to to get some good shots. Final thing we're going to cover is battery life. I found that the battery life of the actual phone wasn't the greatest. I was able to get about 8 or 9 hours of use on this 2300 milliamp battery. But you have to think that the actual tablet itself is meant to be used with this pad phone. So you're going to get much better battery life because it has almost a 5,000 milliamp battery and it will be able to charge it twice. So battery life, if you're gonna use them in combination, I really wouldn't worry about it. 
So what do I think about the pad phone? I think that it is a fantastic idea, but the execution was definitely flawed. It's a bulky device, it's heavy, it's definitely uninspiring in design, and I can see the value in it though, because even though it doesn't have the latest specs, I think that's the reason why they did it, is because they were able to price it so low. $200 on a two-year contract for both of these? I mean, buying a phone and a tablet separately, it can definitely cost you. I can maybe see this working for people going to school or maybe people that own a business that use a tablet at their work and want to take their phone with them with all their information on there. I can see that working, but I can definitely see this as a niche product that definitely people will probably pass up due to the software limitations and the implementation of this fantastic idea. All right, guys, well, that does it for me. Let me know what you think about the Asus PadPhone X in the comment section below. Follow me on Twitter at Super Scientific and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more quality content like this. And I will see you guys in the next video.